MySQL Workbench tutorial. In this video, you'll learn how to get started with MySQL Workbench. You'll learn how to set up a connection, understand the user interface, run queries, view details of objects, and several other features of MySQL Workbench. MySQL Workbench is an integrated development environment for SQL development. It's also called an IDE, an SQL editor, but it's essentially an application that allows you to run SQL queries and work with the database. It's a popular tool for working with MySQL as it's free and has a lot of features. You can download it from the MySQL website, which I'll have a different video for. It's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. I'll assume you have MySQL Workbench installed. Once you open it, it will look like this. This is the Home tab, and it's shown whenever you open MySQL Workbench. The main part of this tab is the list of connections, which is shown under the Welcome message. A connection is a group of settings that allow you to connect to a database server to run queries. You can have multiple connections set up, which will allow you to work with different servers and applications. When you open MySQL Workbench for the first time, you won't have any connections here. I've got a few already, but I'll show you how to set one up. To create a new connection, click on the plus button next to MySQL Connections. A new window will open. This is the new connection window, and it's where you can enter all of the details for your MySQL database connection. Enter in the details for your database connection. This could be on your own computer, known as localhost, or on another database server. If you haven't set up a MySQL database, you can check out my other videos on how to do that. Enter in a connection name, host and username. You can specify a password by clicking on store in keychain. This will allow you to log in without entering a password each time. However, you may want to enter it every time for security reasons. Once you've entered in your details, you can click the test connection button. This will simulate a connection to the database to check that the details you have entered are correct. If they are, it will show a success message. If not, you can change them once they are correct. Once you've entered the right details, click OK and the connection will be saved. The connection will show as a new box on the Home tab, with the name that you gave it at the top of the box. If you get some of the details wrong, or want to change a connection after you've created it, you can. You can right click on the connection box and select edit connection. Alternatively, you can click on the spanner icon next to the plus icon here, which will open a window of all connections. Select the connection that you want to edit, change the details that you need to change, click test connection to test it, then click on close. You can also add new connections, delete connections, duplicate existing connections, and move connections up and down the list in this window. Click close when you're done. Click on the connection box. And after a moment, MySQL Workbench will connect to the database. The screen changes to the main MySQL Workbench editor. The editor has several panels that serve different purposes. At the top, you have a toolbar. This contains the menus such as file and edit. On a Mac, they are at the very top of the screen, and on Windows, they are within the application. But in either case, they are in this area of the screen. You've also got a range of icons here on the toolbar, which we will explain in this video. The middle part of the window is the editor pane, and this is the main part of the editor. It's where you can write and run SQL queries. There's a toolbar that applies to this editor that you can see here. On the right is a panel that contains context help and snippets. We'll look at these features shortly. At the bottom is the output panel, which shows a log of the queries you run on the database. On the left is a panel that shows the schemas, object browser, and an administrative section. On the top right is a series of buttons that let you hide different panels. Click on any of them, and the left, bottom, or right panels will be hidden. This is helpful if you're working on a smaller screen or with a larger query. At the top left of the window is a home button. This will take you back to the home screen if you want to connect to another database. The tab next to it is the current connection. 
and any further connections you run and connect to will be shown as separate tabs. To get started with running queries, you need to select a database first. This is done by clicking on the Schemas tab here, and then double clicking on a database in the object browser on the left panel. The active database is shown with a bold name. Any queries you run will be run on the database with the bold name or the active database. In the main query editor, you can enter your SQL queries. The SQL code has formatting applied so you can tell SQL keywords apart from the table names and listings. Once you enter a query, you can run it by going to the query menu and selecting execute current statement. You can also click on the execute button on the toolbar, which is the lightning bolt here. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which on a Mac is command and enter, and on Windows it's control and enter. Once the select statement is run, a results panel shows at the bottom of the screen with the results of the query. It shows your results in a table. You can scroll the results up and down if there are more than what can fit in the panel. You can resize the panel by dragging the border of the panel up and down. The border of the panel is the gray line here. You can close the results tab by clicking on the X on the tab at the bottom of the screen here. This will give you more room to work with the query. On the left of the results tab is a pin icon. Click on this pin icon, and that will mean that when you run another query, the results tab stays on the screen and the next set of results is shown in a new tab. Without this, the tab of results disappears and is replaced with the new query. So this is helpful if you want to keep your results in between queries. You can write and run multiple queries in MySQL Workbench. In the SQL editor, enter a second query after finishing the first one with a semicolon. You can run all of the queries, one of the queries, or some of the queries if there are many. To run all of the queries, go to Query and select Execute All or Selection. You can also click the lightning bolt button on the toolbar to execute all queries. Or use the keyboard shortcut of Command Shift Enter on a Mac or Control Shift Enter on Windows. All of the queries will be run and the results will appear in separate tabs at the bottom of the window. You can click on the first tab to see the results of the first query and the second tab to see the results of the second query. If you only want to run one of the queries, click inside the query to put your cursor there and then go to Query and select Execute Current Statement. You can also click on the second lightning bolt icon on the toolbar here, or use the keyboard shortcut Command Enter on Mac, or Control Enter on Windows. This means that only the statement under the cursor will be run. The results will be shown at the bottom of the screen. At the bottom of the screen here is the output panel. This shows a log of all the statements that you have run. It shows the number of the statement, a green tick if it has successfully run or a red cross if it did not. The time it was run, the statement that was run, the response such as the number of rows or the error message and the time taken. This is helpful if you want to see what has been run recently. You can also rerun one of the queries by copying it to the editor. To do this, right click on the row in the output that you want to run again and select either Append Selected Items to SQL Script if you want to add the script to the end of your editor, or Replace SQL Script with Selected Items if you want to replace what's in the editor with the selected query. You can then run your query like normal. On the left of the MySQL Workbench window is something called the Object Browser. This is on the Schemas tab here. It shows a list of databases on the server that you have connected to. If you click the arrow to the left of the database name, it will be expanded to show several object types, which are tables, views, stored procedures and functions. If you click the arrow next to one of the items, such as tables, it will be expanded. In this example, we see a list of tables in the database in alphabetical order. You can click on any of the table names 
and information about the table may be shown in the bottom of the screen here. If you don't see the panel at the bottom of the schemas tab, move your mouse to the bottom right until the icon changes. Click and drag this line here up a little bit higher until the panel appears. We can see the columns, data type, and the size of each column in this table. Primary keys are underlined and the foreign keys are bolded. You can expand the arrow next to the table name in the object browser. You'll then see groups of columns, indexes, foreign keys and triggers. Expand the columns entry and you can see all of the columns. You can click on a column and some information about it will be shown in the section on the bottom left. A handy feature of MySQL Workbench is the ability to generate SQL from existing objects. This can save you time when writing queries or creating objects. To see this, right click on an object in the Object Explorer, such as a table. Select Copy to Clipboard, and you can see a range of options. You can copy the name, a select statement, insert, update, or delete, or a create statement. For example, if we select insert statement, it will copy the insert statement for this table to the clipboard. We can then paste this into the SQL editor and the statement will be shown. It automatically adds all of the column names and placeholders for the values. Now you can just add in the values you want and run the statement, saving you time. When you start to work with longer SQL statements, they can get quite messy. Let's take a look at a longer SQL statement. An easy way to clean up your editor is to format the code to make it easier to read. This can be done easily with the beautify command. Click on the brush on the toolbar here. The SQL script will then be formatted to make it easier to read. You can also quickly change your keywords to uppercase or lowercase by going to Edit and then Format and then select either uppercase keywords or lowercase keywords. Another helpful feature of MySQL Workbench is the Snippets feature. A snippet is a piece of code that you can save and use at a later time. You can save your own code snippets by clicking this button in the toolbar. The one that looks like a star. The code in the editor will be added to the My Snippets section on the panel on the right. It's helpful if you find yourself running the same SQL statements over and over. You can edit snippets that already exist in MySQL Workbench by changing this dropdown from My Snippets to one of the other categories. For example, there are a range of SQL DDL snippets here, which you can copy into your code and update as needed. The last feature we'll look at is the ability to edit the data in the table in your results. If you run a query that has a unique identifier of a table in it, such as the primary key, you're able to edit the data in the table in the results panel. You know it's editable if you see a grayed out apply button in the bottom right corner. If the results are not editable, you'll see a read only icon. To edit a value, Double click in the cell in the results table and adjust the value. Once you have finished editing, click the apply button in the bottom right. Then click apply on the pop-up to apply the changes. Click apply on this window as well after you review the update statement. The data is then updated. So that's just a few of the features in MySQL Workbench, but they are the ones you'll use the most often. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about database design and development, visit databasestar.com. That's where I share my best database related content. Which part of this tutorial was the most helpful to you? Was it the process of adding a new connection, the ability to save snippets or something else? Thanks for watching.